This is a lecture on the map reduced programming paradigm for Comp 360 programming languages at North Carolina A&T State University. The third exam in Comp 360 will be Friday, April 24th from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. You must be logged into Blackboard during that time. It will cover all the material since the last exam, which is primarily Haskell, uh, MapReduce, and Prolog. It will be similar in format to the previous exam. Course evaluations are available on Blackboard for all your classes. Be sure to fill them out. MapReduce is a programming model intended to process big data, lots of information. It's a programming model and also the associated implementation to make it work, the processing and it for generating big data sets with parallel distributed execution. MapReduce involves a stream of information moving through several stages. The data item is moved through several functions, one after another. It starts with a source, which is a method that creates a stream of data values. And then it goes through one or many, or maybe no, intermediate operations that take the data values and filter them or modify them, convert them to other values, and move them to the next stage. And finally, there's a terminal operation, an operation that consumes the stream and generally produces some sort of final result. There are many different ways to use MapReduce. A very popular way is through Hadoop. Uh, this is a general purpose framework uh, using MapReduce. It started in 2004, built off a Google distributed file system. It's now a, a pa Apache project uh, and it involves distributed processing of large data sets over clusters of computers. There are four major parts to the Apache Hadoop framework. Uh, there's the common, which is just a bunch of libraries and utilities. There's the distributed file system that stores files over many different computers and provides a very high speed uh, bandwidth getting the data out and into the applications. There's Hadoop Yarn, which is a system for managing the resources. Very useful when you have multiple computers working together. And then there's MapReduce, the programming model that we're going to discuss today. Java supports MapReduce. There's the Java Util Stream package, and it provides support for Lambda expressions and streams. It was introduced back in 2014 when they came out with Java version 8. It was updated a little bit with Java version 9, and it provides streams, filters, maps, collect, and reduce methods to do all the things you need for MapReduce. It's a functional style programming where the input is not changed. Uh, the output uh, goes through and is stateless. It should be the same every time. Uh, uh, and the operations should produce no side effects. Very much like Haskell. Hey, thought you could forget functional programming, eh? It's important for a computer scientist to know. The Java collection interface uh, is used by many of the collections you're aware of, such as array list, hash sets, uh, list queues, uh, all sorts of collection items. Uh, and the interface supports the stream method that generates a stream of elements from these collections. There's also stream methods for input and output classes. You can use a buffered reader and cr create a stream of lines from the buffered reader. Here's an example in Java that will count the number of times a given word occurs in a text file. This particular problem was used in COP163. So here's the program. It starts by defining a buffered reader that reads the file. And then we have a target, that's the word we're looking for. And then comes the MapReduce format, uh, where we are going to count the number of words, it's a long. InReader is the buffered reader. 
and then we call lines. Lines creates a stream from all the lines in the input reader or all the lines of the file. That's then passed to the filter method where we take a value, which we call s, and map it into lowercase and then into the string contains method that checks to see if the target is there. And it will return true or false depending on whether that target string occurs in the input string. And then that goes into the count method, which counts the number of occurrences that get past the filter. In other words, the filter returns a true or false. Then we, if it's true, it goes on to count and count will count the number of them. And the whole result is been passed back to word count, which it prints at the end. Now you'll notice that what we're really doing is calling the lines method on reader and the filter method on that and the count method on that. It's very common in stream-oriented programming to kind of line up the methods one per line instead of stringing them along on one line as we often do in Java. The map function can perform filtering, sorting, and it converts uh, key pairs or key value pairs, processes each one, and returns uh, an output or no output at all. Uh, the output can be the same type or a different type as the input. Here is an example of a Java stream program solving the numerical integration problem that we had in one of our Haskell assignments. We start with the beginning and end in the delta, the start of the numerical integration, the end, and the increment. And then we create a stream object. The stream object iterates over a stream. The iterate method starts with the beginning, which in this case is one, and then it's like a for loop. For each one, it increments the value by delta until the value is less than, while well, the value is less than end or three. And then we take that stream, that num stream, which uh, goes from one to three by values of 0 0.1, and pass it through a map that applies the function. This is our mathematical function, 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 to that delta function, and then pass it to a reduce. We have the map and reduce where uh, it's going to sum. Uh, you might know also the call of the sum method for a double using the double colons. That doesn't look like the Java I know. There's much more to Java than was taught in COP 163. Streams provide a potential for parallelism. The different steps in the stream can be executed in parallel. Java has the parallel stream class that you can call to make streams that will run in parallel, or you can simply put dot parallel in a series of methods. Uh, if you have a parallel stream, the order of the output may be slightly different than what you have from a non-parallel stream because the different parts of it are operating in parallel. This is particularly important for MapReduce when it's used in large data sets and it allows a program to easily use all the available cores in a system. Like Haskell, uh, Java uses a lazy evaluation of streams. In other words, you can create an infinite stream and then it won't actually create the stream until it's needed. In other words, it really depends on what the terminal operation requires and will only can create and consume those items as necessary. Uh, the intermediate operators are not are lazy and they'll again only execute as a result of processing when it's actually needed. Read these uh, two simple Java 8 stream tutorials. I've looked at several and these two seem to be the best ones I could find. You'll learn a lot more about Java 8 streams than just listening to me. Remember the third exam at Comp360 is Friday, April 24th, starting at 2 and ending at 3. You have one hour to complete the exam. You must be logged into Blackboard during that time. We'll cover all the materials since the last exam. And do fill out your course evaluations for all your classes. Only three students have done the evaluation for Comp360. Be sure to complete the evaluations for all of your classes.